Okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we are live for a, a session of Seller in the Spotlight. We have two really special guests today um, on the stream. We've got Michael Barr from Desert Sky Games in Chandler, Arizona. Hi, Michael. Thank you for joining us. And Benno Chapman, our GM of Seller Services here at TCG Player. So uh, we're primed for a great conversation. If any of our viewers have uh, comments in the chat, jump in, uh, we'll hit them, um, but let's just uh, get right into it. We've got a list of questions, and uh, first of all, we wanna know how it went with the, uh, the ban list yesterday. Did that bump your business? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Megan and Benno, for having me here for Seller in the Spotlight. Um, that, I'm so glad they banned <laughs> what they did because nobody wanted to play standard, and now everybody wants to play standard yeah. with, with the changes, and, uh, we had uh, guys right away as soon as the store opened and they came and sat right at the kiosk and started chewing through cards the, to, to try and get, uh, you know, before everybody figured out what to, what to buy and, and, and take home. So that is uh, kind of the best case scenario for, for a banning like that. It was a really big day for all of us, I think, uh, as most of the band days are. I'm glad to hear that it was successful for you. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot of fun to watch. Um, and when you have been a seller on the platform for a really long time, I, I know, you know, the ins and outs, um, you know, you watched pro you jumped in, uh, last February. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the origins of desert sky? Sure. So, um, I've been in magic since, uh, basically end of 94. Um, I remember at the time, you know, uh, it was real hard to get packs of, of revised in the dark, which is what was out. And, they told us Fallen Empires was coming. We're like, we're buying boxes of this. <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want to miss. It yeah. turned turned out not quite as good as we thought. But uh, I then, uh, as they started the judge program, I did that and wound up being a level three judge for a few years. And um, in the late '90s, early '00s, I had some game stores. Uh, my first one was Wizards Tower, and that lasted like half a year. And then uh, I had a stake in Arizona Gamer that lasted a few. Uh, finally decided, all right, I got to have a real career. Uh, went to law school, uh, worked in healthcare administration. And then uh, in summer of 2011, uh, people who live in Arizona will remember this, Atomic Comics closed all at once. And that was a chain. We had, there was a bunch of locations all over town. And they, one day we showed up and there was a sign on the door, Atomic Comics gone. And we're like, is this, is this, is this for real? Uh, you know, th they were everywhere. Now, uh, the suburbs, uh, Chandler and Gilbert in the southeast of Phoenix, had half a million people and no game stores, zero. And we're like, all right, I, I, those of us who've been playing Magic this whole time and who used to be in the judge scene and the store scene, I think this is the time that we want to come on back. And, and uh, uh, open, we're in Chandler now, open at Gilbert when we first came back 2012 and um, had a 2,400 square foot location that everybody said was way too big and uh, the industry has kind of changed now. It's a, a little bit of a different story now. We got these gigantic stores uh, popping up and just just uh, doing amazing things. But uh, that was when it began. And then uh, uh, ran through five years there and then and, and moved to the facility we have now. Excellent. And that was in 2011 or shortly uh, thereafter? Uh, yeah, uh, 2012, uh, uh, Gilbert opened. And by then okay. we were already like, you know, eBaying and stuff. And I think we turned on TCG Player Sync in I want to say like 2012 or yeah, early 13, I, something like that. Like like it was very very soon. It was 2012. Sync, yeah, yeah, all the way till uh, this February, uh, and we finally were like, you know what? It's it's time. We're gonna make this jump to pro, and uh, uh, it took a month or two. Uh, we had you guys helping us the whole way, and and the support was outstanding as always. And we made it uh, across that gap, and now we're all the way on pro. The end, not sync at all. Excellent, excellent. That's a, that's a very interesting decision that a lot of people try to ponder. What were some of the challenges that you faced when you moved over from Sync over to Pro? Well, like the initial announcement of Pro, I want to say was Gamma 2017, maybe? Yeah, I got and, my, uh, my llama shirt on, 2017. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and of course, there was a lot of excitement over that, but we realized that it was going to be a work in progress. And, okay. uh uh, something like, like I don't, I'm not the guy for beta testing. It's got to already work. And then I'll, and then I'll be the second mouse who jumps That's in. Fair. But, uh, uh, I knew right away, I said, all right, this is very promising. If this keeps getting developed, I'm going to want to be there. And uh, little by little things like how to do pull lists, uh, things like uh, it's, 
it's hard for me to remember off the top of my head, but there were, there were features that one by one were starting to replace what we knew we needed that we already okay. had. And then, uh, by around the time we got to like late 2018, I'm like, okay, it's, it's close enough. Let's go ahead and, and get this. And of course, I, you know, once you're running a lot of sales at scale, you can't just immediately cut the switch. You've got to, uh, you know, kind of plan a migration and then, and then by, by February we'd done it. So if you were to talk to somebody else about moving from sync and in full on into pro, understanding you know, it sounds like you you recognize a lot of the benefits a lot of the value yep. you let a lot of the kinks get worked out and you've jumped in um on that migration plan any tips or tricks so uh, i would encourage somebody to have a shipping solution that okay. does not depend on their sync software and uh that was kind of what saved us was the fact that we were able to take a large volume of shipping that was coming in through uh, you know, through um, Crystal and Indicia and immediately just send the same things over to, I, we were using PayPal for a while and then stamps. And, and just as long as you are able to keep product flowing out the door and, and keep those orders going, you're good. And the big, the big worry I had initially with the jump over was, oh my goodness, are we, is, are we going to be stepping into a uh, you know, situation where we can't fulfill? And yeah. uh, turns out we, we could, we just had to have it ready. And gotcha. um, I, I would I would say um, the inventory changeover was one of the easiest things I could think of. Uh, you guys just flicked a switch and we were there, awesome. and uh, yeah, and like uh, locally, I, I mean, I had to you know immediately like turn off all the kiosks from Crystal, turn them on to TCP, okay. and, and okay. like because otherwise people are buying cards that they don't realize aren't there anymore, right? right? Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, but uh, it's one of those things where if you plan it, if if you if you sit down and you you figure out every piece that has to be replaced. And, uh, and you make sure that you have, and then you finally just hide your inventory, make the final switch and then turn it back on. And you're, and you're mostly good. Like after that, we had to audit because there were so many uh, errored cards that we had in stock and didn't know it. Uh, we probably recovered $5,000 worth of cards uh, wow. just going wow. through. So where, stuff where there had been either uh, a, 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 an error or an oversell that wasn't really an oversell or whatever okay. have you, or a cancellation <laughs> and like, wow, this is <laughs> birthday time. You know? Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. We've, uh, we've actually talked to a number of stores over the past six months or so uh, that have gone through a mass digitization process where they just set aside and they had a room not unlike the one it looks like you're sitting in right now with boxes and boxes of stuff that they yeah. brought in on trade. Um, and in one occurrence, you know, we had uh, some folks on our media team go out and help them out and they saw something very similar. I think a lot of people are kind of sitting on um, tons of cards and, and items that people want and, and it's really easy to lose track. How, how do you feel you stay on top of all these things? Because running a business is a, yeah. like I think we've talked about uh, before we started this, it's a game unto itself. It, it really is. It really is. Um, that is a constant source of uh, with, I guess I, sh I would phrase it like this. Um, if any employee thinks that there's nothing to do, well, there's something to do because there's unprocessed cards <laughs> yeah. at all yeah. times. Like yeah. there's, especially if we've had a week with anybody out sick, I think I did a blog okay. post about this uh, a few months ago yes. where if we have any absences, next thing you know, there's a, a couple dozen 5,000 count boxes that are unpicked and we haven't gotcha. even looked at them. Um, it's, um, it really is like the, uh, it, it is a fundamental business component, whereas up, up front, front of house, it's driven by whether there's a customer in front of you mm -hmm. back of house. It really never stops. And, and yeah. um, I, I like to tell, uh, especially people who think that we sit around and play games all day, which of course <laughs> the, the, the mainstream public thinks, right. Is totally yes. true. And I like to tell them like, Oh goodness. No. Like if, if, if I'm playing a game, I'm leaving something unfinished. That's right. And, that's uh, right. The, yeah. There is a trade off. Right. Right. I have a fulfillment manager who works back of house primarily, and he's supposed to know what's been looked at and what hasn't. And he does just a phenomenal job of keeping track of more than I could keep track of. But even then I'll tell him like, okay, give me a couple of boxes that you haven't gotten to. And, and okay. uh, you know, I've got two hours before I have to go somewhere. I'll get on it too. The company culture is sorting cards is a job that everyone does. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. um, I worked in a bookstore when I was younger and there was a similar ethos, but it was shelving books. Yes. Shelving books is something everybody does. There's always books to shelve. So I imagine there's always cards for you to scan and to get mm -hmm. out. 
because there's an opportunity there. Just yesterday, I was at a, a store that's local to me, and I was flipping through uh, with with my with my son, our uh, their 25 cent bin, and yeah. using our app and quickly just scanning them to see you know which ones do I already have, which one are, am I missing. I found a card that was worth uh, $55 and, and I just turned around and I, I said, I'll buy this. And they're like, okay. Cause to, for them, it's, it's, it's unrealized. I, you know, they yeah. could easily be scanning it and say, Oh, this card should not be in the 25 cent bin. Yeah. I, I, I really love the, the, the tech, the, the gradual development of tech that has led us to stuff like the scanner and, and, uh, and what we're doing with like the kiosk has gotten better, like twice this year, like that I yeah. know about that I yeah. can think of. Yeah, and the recent one where it pops up with the storefront is just fantastic too. Like Good. it makes it really easy to tell whether it has reset. Uh, it makes it easy for us to make sure that it's ready for the next person. And the scanner is like it's it's part of this. The, the software drives it drives so much of what we do. You have to have good software, or you're dead in the water. How yeah. many do you have set up, Mike? Uh, there's three kiosks now, and it's going to become five as soon as I get the new. Uh, square terminals because that'll free up two iPads and then I'll I'll have kiosks on iPad that way. Uh, oh, right okay. now I'm using old iMacs because they work really well for their workhorses. Kiosks. Right? Yeah, yeah, they're still running after who knows how many years and they yeah. not cost me anything because I already done using them as registers and, right. and now okay. uh, and now uh, people can sit right at them and browse all day and it's fantastic. That's great. Now, do you find you know I, when I picture people coming in for events. I imagine there's a, a good section of people that are very talkative, outgoing, but because of this, these, these things that we love and deal with, it, it will attract people that are a little more introverted, maybe not so talkative. Do you find that the kiosk kind of helps include those people into the community a little more? It's, it, it is, and, and, and a, you kind of hit on it there, which is that a, a person who doesn't want to have to negotiate their way to buying a deck yeah is able yeah. to sit down and kind of just crawl through the catalog and yeah. get exactly what they want and it's um the pushback that we typically get from the kiosk is from someone who's used to walking up to a counter and asking to look through a okay. binder and flip 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 and pulling cards out and it takes a it takes an experience before we have shown them to like hey you know you sit here and look you can take it take exactly you know, you want to save 50 cents on a moderately played version. You want to get the foil version. You can get precisely the deck you want. Uh, yeah. l lay it all up in the cart. Uh, submit to us. We will go fetch the exact cards you want. And it, it takes a, it, usually by the time they've had an order or two delivered, they never want to do it any other way. Right. And from that, yeah, from that day forward, someone's like, do they have binders? Like, oh, no, no, no. They, <laughs> they do it differently. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, the, in fact, the only cards on display to the public is a little lit case full of just high end stuff. Like, gotcha. there's a time gotcha. walk in there and some other, it, because really, it, there's nothing else like that's as good as showing them electronically. There's that's right. Nothing else is as good as that. And it's uh, it's like you, you need to have the showroom. There are certain things that are, you know, still tightly aligned to the the, the tactile side of things. I yeah. understand that entirely. So, you have events. People come in. Yes. What are your events like? Um, it's there's a lot of this, and it's almost all magic. Although it, there's there's still support for for the other TCGs, but seven days a week it's magic. Mm -hmm. um, okay. There are uh, we've. We've uh, emphasized like flat pricing, casual friendly, but what, it, what has happened in practice is that the competitive players haven't gone away. They've just gotten used to that being the new normal. Okay. And so a, a new player, especially who sits for commander, will gain skill pretty quickly and gotcha. start like this person who it seems like only yesterday they were buying a deck builders toolkit and now they're like hey what can you do for me on like a sneak attack and a blightsteel colossus so that i can just end games instantly and we're like oh i i see that you've talked to, to john and steve and so on who are running whatever <laughs> you know whatever silly yeah. deck yeah. you know and i'm like okay so and i kind of like that because that's what magic should be you should immediately okay. say to yourself you know uh what can i do because if they're developing at the table then they'll learn the etiquette and they will mm -hmm. learn the personal interaction. And man, that's, that's the hardest thing to grab hold of in a store, especially if you're like me, you're autistic, you don't really understand the social angle, but you know what it has to be like. And yeah. they, they have to be able to interact friendly with one another. And the sooner they get uh, uh, confident about their ability to play the game, the sooner they can work on the social side and 
and I'm glad to see that. Excellent, excellent. And the, you know the 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 game itself, the community is filled with so many interesting people that one of the things I always love about the game is, is how it draws all these people in and you'll find people with so many different backgrounds and and walks of life coming into these stores. We at TCG player are really trying to help stores become much more socially centric. So it's here. It, it, it makes me happy to know that you're, you're able to help do that seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Yep. Tournaments uh, for magic every single day. And then, uh, you know, all day long, uh, it's, uh, local time, it's 11.45. At 12.01, people are going to come in and sit down and start playing Commander. And they will be here okay. until 9.59. And yeah, they, yeah. It's just, and it's not just like, you know, like some of them are students. They don't have anything to do. But like it's, it, it, <laughs> it, people will drift in and out all day long because they're comfortable with that. And it's, yeah. uh, you know, and they've had a friendly reception. And we have like, we do a lot of very aggressive inclusion in like the branding. Like we use the rainbow logo because we want it to be very obvious from the start that like LGBTQ, come on in. We are in the store, ground yeah. zero. Yeah. Uh, we want them to be happy. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I loved it when I was kind of pulling together details on your store and just looking at everything and I visited your pro page and I was like, I'm going to pop on and, and check out the events. Your events calendar is just, it's robust, it's filled up, it, it's great to see. Um, so I imagine you keep a pretty full house. What's your average attendance for Friday Night Magic? F and M uh, floats around 80 to 90 uh, wow. across four or five formats. Uh, I wow. think, uh, what is it? Uh, the big hits the last few weeks have been Pioneer and Draft. Mm -hmm. Pioneer's off the charts. I couldn't believe right. it. I think we had 36 for Pioneer on Friday. It was, it was insane. Wow. I loved it. Just loved it. And maybe Standard will be big again mm -hmm. right now going into uh, everybody wanting to play something new now. Yeah, yeah. Now, you're, um, you, you watch the, the metagame quite a bit, as I imagine. And you're not only... My Go guys ahead. do. <laughs> ah, all right, all right. I kind of watch. Like I, I understand what's going on, but if you if if you were to ask me, like you know what what's being built right now, ask my guys <laughs> who are good at magic. I I I'm the store owner. I'm I'm just a ca filthy casual, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But if you're um if you were looking at uh, Pioneer and the popularity that's coming in with Pioneer, and having been here or, or running a store for several years now, you've seen a wave or two come through. Do you think Pioneer's really got some longevity? Or do you think it's, like you said, it, uh, it's going to bring back something else behind it like Standard? Oh, so yeah. This, so this is a topic of, of kind of immediate impression in the retailer community. And yeah. uh, I, I do think it's going to stick around because it fills the role that Modern was filling for a while there, okay. which is to say a non-rotating format that is mostly made up of cards that these players kind of have or, or yeah. not even have because they don't because they they're constantly living from deck to deck but that they have a lot of yeah. and modern now is almost a le what legacy was which is let's power things up and let's go a little bit further back and and modern goes back you now 16 years mm -hmm. and uh importantly wizards can print every card in modern if they mm -hmm. want to there's no reserve list concern there and now legacy is uh you know just relegated to boutique status because they can't print every card without mm -hmm. breaking the reserve list promised and and so uh thanks to modern horizons we know that cards can join modern without ever having been in standard and because hasbro still likes money i suspect they will reprint everything <laughs> that's not right. reserved at some point right? maybe there's, there's no reason that they if it's not a reserve list card Mm -hmm. it, it, there'll be a product for it eventually. I don't know yeah. what it's going to be. It might not be yeah. for a little while, but it's, it's coming. And so modern pioneer and standard, that's an ecosystem that I think I, it makes sense. It makes sense to, to, for them to do this. And I'm glad okay. they're doing it the way they did. And it just, if they can fix the reserve list influence on commander, which I don't think is a, a very good thing, it'll be amazing because commander is awesome until that new player runs into his first like severe suppression deck that's running tabernacles <laughs> and abysses and like yes or that or their first like oh you know you just got like got immediately wiped out by something doing infinite mana out of candelabra and something else and you're like well i guess i won't bu build that <laughs> for less than the price of a honda civic you know so. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you've been playing against my son <laughs> oh it's it's i'm a that's the other thing is for magic part of the reason i don't play too much is 
is that I'm I'm the I'm the bad player. My favorite okay. old time deck is Stasis. I All I right. want to stop my opponent from having any fun, and I know that's <laughs> horrible. <as a> <laughs> no fun. I won't do, I won't inflict <laughs> that on people. Yeah, it's a what prison where we're tapping everything and and winter orbs and oh yes, I love it. <laughs> Let's do, and it's just miserable for especially for a for a new player. It's I would never subject them to that. Um, yeah. No, what's your favorite game? Oh, oh sorry. I, I, it's, I mean, for tabletop, it's, it's yeah. made by, by, okay. by a lot. Um, and um, my wife and her friends are all board gamers, and they, mm -hmm. they try a lot of the, like, flavor of the month stuff. And, um, uh, I, and uh, they're, uh, they'll, they'll tell me up front if something that's got a lot of hype behind it is, is not super fun to play. And then I know the guy, go ahead, maybe right. not reorder so many of okay. those. Okay, okay. Right? <laughs> but uh, sometimes it's as good as advertised, and I want to make sure that I've got that, that one for, you know, for the long haul. So absolutely. So how much of your store is allocated to gameplay and how much of it is, is allocated to retail? Um, I've got seating every day for about 120 people. And wow. uh, for a big event, we can, we can expand that up, up past 200. It's, uh, it's a 6,400, just under 6,400 square foot store and uh, the largest in the Phoenix Metro physically. Um, and uh, the, uh, I want to be able to, to it, I want to say that it's a, a thousand square feet or so of just tables and chairs. Uh, and, and then, you know, of course there's all the shared space and then all the retail space and, the, and yeah. then the back office. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, there's, and there's like a whole area where, where just the back office staff pulls cards and sorts cards. And, okay. And One of the growing trends I'm seeing in new stores that are popping up and, and I know you follow the, the, the ecosystem of new stores opening and closing. And I'm hoping we're going to get to that. But I want to ask about um, private rooms. A number of stores I'm seeing are popping up where they're having, they're building out private rooms and people can book them or rent them. It really depends on how the store is. There's a, a store not too, another store is not too far from me. They have six private rooms. They don't yes. rent any of them, but you, they, they book them all. Yes. So, and, and in the room, they've got all the rule books and everything set up so people can just show up with their cards or with their figures or whatever their game they're going to play. And it's great because they're in a slightly more rural area. So you have all of these families that don't have like an urban center and yeah. the store presides like a clubhouse, a collection point for them. Have you seen anything uh, along those lines? So it's, I, I personally love that. And I, I, I want to see that. Uh, I think that in terms of monetizing play space, that's a, a strong offering. Um, and I wonder if, that's something that's going to be uh, regionally uh, working or not working because we had uh, a few weeks ago, a fantastic store, a friendly store uh, about 20 miles east of me called gateway games closed its doors. Oh no. And they had built, uh, yeah, they had built um, private rooms for Dungeons and Dragons with like bricks on the wall, like a dungeon oh. and you know, the dragon heads. It was, oh. it was gorgeous. It was fantastic. And they got nonstop uh, pushback from, uh, customers and uh, really? price complaints and non-cooperation and people smuggling in grocery bags full of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I can't believe this. This is one of the best stores I've ever seen. It's not, it's not quite the wandering dragon, but it's gorgeous <laughs> for our area. Okay. And, and it's still not good enough. Like it, it made me think to myself like, well, what's the missing ingredient? Well, I don't necessarily know that they were doing anything wrong. They were probably doing it right. It may have just been a mismatch of clientele to, to store. Yeah, uh, there's there's a snakes and lattes up by Arizona State University. Uh, they seem perfectly popular, and you know the rooms aren't private, but they're serving food. Uh, maybe that is going to be you know kind of one of the missing ingredients. You look at mega stores like Gigabytes off in Atlanta, and uh, they've got you know food service as their their monetization. Vector. Yes. And yeah. uh, I look at that and I say, okay, so, well, I'm not really ever going to enter the restaurant business, but I do like the private room idea. Yeah. What am I going to do about that? I don't know yet. I have, I have some things I'm going to try and we'll see what, we'll see what uh, looks like it's working. Now, when you go start to explore these new ideas, do you ever look at uh, finding other small businesses such as yourself that don't operate in your space to partner with, say like pizza parlors or something like that to help bring food in? Right. Uh, in, in, uh, in the plaza, we've got super friendly neighbors, including some food, and we're able to get that to work. We, we just allow it outright. Like if yep. you're, you know, if, if you're going to bring in Domino's pizza from next door, or you're going to bring in, you know, from the ramen place at a hundred percent, please do. Uh, and uh, basically that this is an untapped space that I think it has potential, especially the like marketing potential. Like I, I can't, I can't imagine, like if you walk into uh 
it's probably not the best comparison, but like you walk into a casino, yeah. there's, there's screens and lights and stuff everywhere and branding yeah. everywhere and major brands and stuff. And well, nobody's really doing that in the game store space. And why aren't they? And I don't know. And maybe I should. And it's, it's, it's a very it's good a, question. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, it's definitely something I have my eye on as, as like, let me see if I can develop something along these lines, you know? Interesting. So going back to something we were talking about a second ago, um, stores opening closing you you know you have a, a fantastic blog uh i was thank you <laughs> yeah, thank to earlier you. today and and um we're big fans i i would definitely encourage anybody viewing the stream today to or or watching this on a replay to go check out your blog do, do you want to just mention the uh the url while we're here yeah so and uh we have that at i want to say it's desert sky games blogspot.com oh dsgcw blogspot.com i don't even always it's just it's a bookmark for me right right okay. um so it was that was originally for desert sky games and comics warehouse but uh i didn't end up using that branding but the blog was getting read so i wasn't going to change it sure and um it really is a uh, I call it the backstage pass because i come you know i grew up as a musician and and that was i always thought that people enjoyed like behind the music and yes. what's what's going on yeah. you know what what does this look like from behind the curtain and the the blog is absolutely in that voice and there's also plenty of absolute like like sarcasm and joke cracking in the like in the in the vein of like a Bill Simmons or something like that and some of the you know the the bloggers and 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 journalists who go that way and and I really yeah. want to make it fun to read like entertaining to read and at the same time maybe be able to teach something that's useful and uh, there's like there's a non-trivial like if you enjoy the blog you kind of like the store and getting people to kind of like the store is a great thing it's a fantastic thing that's Even right they've never that's visited right. right that's uh that's isn't that all uh, what a lot of brand and marketing is supposed to be and, and it is oh, golly if yeah. this is if this is what i can what i know how to do i'm just going to keep at it you put a so, lot of heart into this blog. It is awesome. I mean, you cover a lot, but it always comes back to you're running a small business. You know, you offer insights, you know, and it, and it comes from a place of deep understanding. And I, I love the way you weave the humor into it. Um, it's definitely great. Everybody should check out the backstage pass. Yeah. Yes, please. Thank you so much. I, I'm <laughs> always so deeply complimented. I never really know what to say, except yes. that thanks for reading and please please keep reading. <laughs> it's good stuff. If you had to offer like, you know, again, I know Ben is probably going to circle in on, on the, the list of uh, openings and closings. Cause that's a really, you know, cool thing that you track. But anytime I read one of your blog posts, there's something to take away. What is the biggest thing that you could offer someone who is opening up a game store, or even thinking about it, knowing what, you know, you've come a long would, ways here. I would say you, you have to realize that there are other ways to make money with that investment and that mm -hmm. you should really make really sure that you don't want to do something easier first and turn the thing you love into work. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't, I don't hate games now. I like, I love games just fine. However, the game I play, uh, as we were kind of chatting about before, the game I play is, is make DSG the best it can be. Yeah. And that's, uh, a lot of people will, will ask me, they're like, hey, you want to sit down and, and try out this, this tapestry thing? And I'll be like, I mean, I guess <laughs> like I just I don't think I could sit for four hours and do it because compared to the, the absolute like adrenaline of running the game store, that's it's um, it would be too tedious for me, even though it's top tier, like it, it, it great rated game and everybody's raving about it. And I 100 mm -hmm. percent believe that, by the way, like when somebody tells me the game is fantastic. I, I tend to take them at their word because if they're playing it, they know, they know whether it's good. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I would say, you know, get ready for, uh, for a real experience running your store, um, get a good lease. Cause that's the hardest thing to change. Yeah. 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 Get, get a, get a lease that you can live with. And then the, a big theme that's come back, uh, it's appeared in my blog a lot over the last year is based on where you are, you, what you, are going to do is going to is going to change a lot if you're in a major metro like me you've got to commit hard to doing just a couple of things really 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 well you got to be tier one because in in a town in, in a metro of five million people if i'm not one of the best magic stores then mm -hmm. everybody why would they even come to me they've got other options right okay and um whereas if if you're in the sticks uh and you've got a micropolitan or, or, or rural area um, you can do extremely well being a jack of all trades and being labor efficient and just running mm -hmm. a professional, you know, mm -hmm. store and be clean and train your people well and, and be friendly to your community. And you do not have to have a full set of, of, you know, power nine in stock 
in order to take care of that local clientele. And because out of the people who are there, they're, they're, you know, they're not going to be anybody who's looking for that really. Yeah. But there's going to yeah. be a lot of people who are looking for a used PlayStation four or who are looking mm -hmm. for a box of throne of El drain. You're still going to do great. So, it, and, and if, if you're in a major Metro, figure out what you're doing well and go to the end of the earth with it and, okay. and maybe uh, consider exiting out of other things, which you, uh, you mentioned the blog post today is, yeah, uh, I'm leaving the miniatures category, taking a break from it because Take I never say never because miniatures is so great. I love Warhammer. I really do love it as a game. Um, I would love to leave that door open and potentially come back. But the reality is, um, you know, we've got the mass market, uh, uh, where, which is to say, like, you've got your Amazons where somebody can buy their Warhammer from. There are three Warhammer stores in town mm -hmm. and they're fantastic. And there's a tier one store called Imperial Outpost on the northwest side of town. And they are, it's everything you'd ever want out of a Warhammer store. And, and uh, I look at it and I say, like, you know what? I, I'm not seeing critical mass out of this. Maybe I should get out of the way and let uh, those players have that world-class experience with these other stores. And, and just discretion is a better part of valor. And uh, something that's coming up in December on the blog, I'm going to talk about market share. Um, TCGs and video games. 90% of my business. Okay. And that's, uh, that, that number is going to shock and horrify a lot of diverse store owners. <laughs> sure. Are, sure. They're, they're sitting here going like, ah, I'm getting kind of worried. Magic's getting up toward 40%. <laughs> you, man, you got so much further you can go before you got to worry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It, but I understand it though. Like 90%, that's really on balance. And what that tells me is that the clientele that comes to me for TCGs and video games, is getting what they need because they're opening their wallets when they get here. Mm -hmm. And that tells me that the, the clientele for it, like I love board games and my wife's a board gamer first, you know, and board games are less than 3% of my sales, less than three, like less uh, than three. How, yeah. Yeah. How much, how much time should I really spend obsessing over how That's to fair. pick those hits? Right. It, yeah. Versus spending that same amount of money uh, buying, you know, the next collection of dual lands that comes in the door. It's not even a question anymore. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how many of your products do you think you will continue to carry or currently carry in order to introduce or bring somebody into the store uh, to show them magic and to show them the video game work that you're also doing? The, the, the big plus about video games is it's mainstream. It's, it's a gigantic yeah. market. It's, it's, you know, it's a hundred billion dollar market versus I think all of tabletop was 3 billion in, uh, in 2017, the last number I looked at. And, and yet like that times, you know, 50 is the video game market. So I can get people to come in the door for that. And that's not too tough to do. I do want them to get into magic and I want to feel them to feel welcome to explore it. Mm -hmm. And uh, wizards and Hasbro are pretty keen to this notion. And yes. the, the whole premium store push is to try to kind of make stores that already sell magic into very inviting places. That's right. And, uh, yeah, so I'm, I, I'm actually in that process now. I just, just had my uh, premium review phone call with my wizard rep uh, yesterday, actually. Excellent. And uh, they're, they're wonderful about this, by the way. They really do like take a close look and, at what works for us and what, what we can do. And uh, he gave me a punch list of stuff to work on. And, and you know, let me know when, you, when you've uh, – and some of it we knew. Like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, that it's uh, – uh, you know, the, the, these fixtures don't match, make them match. Okay. So we're going to do oh, that. Yeah, right. Gotcha. But it, that, but what it, what it also comes down to is how, how a person walking in the door from the mainstream, they've got to feel comfortable right away. And if they don't, they're not going right. to explore anything that we have. Right. Right. And so video games is a common thing. They understand what they're looking at. It makes them comfortable. We've got the vintage arcade. So we're fully in, <sighs> invested in the video game side. Fantastic. Magic, yeah, I want them to see a room full of people having fun at those tables and playing yeah. magic. And then we've got this giant wall full of magic boxes and cards and so forth going, you know, all the way back for as far as I can get product. And then, and then that hopefully is, uh, gives them the idea that like, hey, this is a reasonably permanent thing that you can invest your attention and energy and money into and it's not just going to go away, right? That's fantastic. And, and then you're, you're using TCG Player and a yes. few other uh, external you know, sales channels. You, I think you already mentioned uh, Amazon. And yep. then you've got the blog. Uh, yes. You have the kiosk. You clearly see the advantage in using these uh, technologies and, and sales streams that are on the internet that may bring you customers that are not local to your metro area. And this Absolutely. Is Absolutely. It's um, uh, TCG Player as a marketplace channel has been indispensable. It has been uh, being able to buy 
say anything like magic that walks in the door and not say no yeah. is really the only way that you can get that critical mass of people continuing to bring stuff in. Yeah. Because if people don't think you're going to buy, they're not going to waste their time. They're going to, they're going to sell it some other way. Right. So, and if I'm buying at a rate that's much higher than the local market can soak up and it, and it is, then uh, we've got uh, TCG as that, as that channel. And, and I, I'm not going to be satisfied until every single TCG player deposit is like five digits left of the decimal. And we're not quite at that level yet, but that's, that's where I'm pushing Ooh, to, to that's get. Fantastic. I, want, that is yeah, awesome. I, I want the volume pushing through. Well, yeah. I should, I should give a shout out on this. Um, <laughs> Because a gentleman uh, named Michael Caffrey, who you probably are familiar with, he runs Tales of Adventure uh, in Pennsylvania. And uh, he was the first person to really open my eyes to the idea that like, there's kind of no limit to how much volume you can push through your store if you've got a framework in place to do it. And, and, you've, got it, and you, you know, you've got cards coming in and you understand what the software wants yep. and you're conforming your process to feed into what the software wants. And Pro is a big part of that. That's, part, that's another big benefit of Pro. You've already got everything. The database is ready for me. I can be on a business trip a thousand miles away. Some card can come in that we've never had before. It doesn't happen that much anymore, but immediately my staff knows what to do with it because Pro already has it and it's ready to go. And oh, however excellent. much we're doing, you know, like, like th that capacity is there and we're just going to keep, it, we haven't begun to scratch the surface of how much volume we can push through that. That's fantastic. That's it, awesome this to is, hear. It yeah. makes me sing, knowing that all the work that me <laughs> and everybody else is doing is helping you out. Well, I feel like, you know what, you've been such a great uh, case for, you know, you made such an informed decision. You didn't just say like, hey, here's a new thing. We're going to jump right in. You understand your business and you, you waited, you watched, and, you know, you, you took a really smart approach to jumping in and, and, and also, you know, and it, it's ramped up in that, in that strong, sensible way. It's, it's been awesome. So I'm glad to, to hear that you love it so much. Oh yeah, doing our best, absolutely. And you, you guys, I, I tell you, the the seller support is unparalleled because uh, uh, you guys are probably perfectly familiar with, you know, Amazon and eBay. The seller support is, eh, too bad. We're giving them whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And on sure, and, and uh, <laughs> but on on the TCG side, we do want to be unfailingly polite to customers at all times. Mm -hmm. The buyer, we want the buyer experience to be completely frictionless. <laughs> I tell new store okay. new stores, you've got to study what that means. If you don't understand what that means. You're going to keep getting hung up on stuff that's actually not right. a problem. It works in your favor. Right. And, and when, once you have a frictionless uh, sales mechanism, okay. it becomes so much easier to actually catch bad actors because, mm -hmm. because right. now they filter out. Now, yeah. they, but before yeah. it's like, oh, well, something went wrong. Well, is it because my process is broken? Is it because my interaction wasn't what it should have been? Okay. Well, once you have a frictionless uh, process, once you have a back or they stick right out like a sore thumb and you're yeah. like, okay. So and it makes it that much easier for you guys to get our backs. And do and, you think, uh, oh. uh, I'm sorry, Megan, go ahead. Oh no, sorry. We, uh, there's so much to say. There is. There is. <laughs> um, when, when, like, you know what that, uh, I, I, again, back to the blog, um, you recently posted one that I, I just got such a kick out of reading the whole thing. And it was the customer asks and the customer means. Yes. And it was, you know, and it was just really solid, solid advice. And, you know, obviously, yeah. again, you, you have the experience yourself. You know, I've seen your tickets come through. You know how to handle your, your buyers, and, and you're very de delicate about that. How do you train your staff? And, and how many staff do you employ? And, and what is that process like to keep everybody oh. kind of doing, answering it the same way you would? Yeah, so we're, we got, it's pretty tight belts right now. I've got 10 employees and, mm -hmm. uh, and about half of them work front of house and about half back of house. And there's a couple of them that have been trained on both and they can flex. And uh, I really, uh, not to go all TQM, but I really do believe in the whole, like, teach them why they do what they do. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's, I don't have entry level people. It's, it's not, this can't be your first job. I won't hire somebody who's never worked anywhere else before. Um, it, I, I want it to be an adult who I can say, look, we, we uh, interact with the customer this way because it's proven that this creates a good, good experience and not a negative experience. And yes, sometimes there's going to be somebody coming in who's trying to you know, sell us you know, a fake card or a broken mm -hmm. system or whatever have you. And we have our, you know, and, and if that happens, okay, we've got some processes for that and I'll teach them what those are. But we have to assume that every single customer who in wants like the Apple store experience of yeah. this is, you know, this is brick and mortar retail in the modern technological era. If, if they really want a commodity good and they don't really care how they get it, they, they can get it on one of these. Right. Yeah. So uh, walking in the door, it has to be better. And so, yeah, I, I will train them. We have uh, 
uh, kind of canned text that is, hey, I'm sorry we messed up your order. That was, uh, you know, we had an inventory error. Uh, would you like us to ship as much as we have or we, we can promptly give you your money back? Whatever, you know, whatever we got to do. And, uh, and a lot of times that's all they really want to hear is that they're not going to be left holding the bag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. as a, it's the same thing for me. If I buy something and there's a problem, I just want to know that I'm not hosed, right? <laughs> like, that's right. I know that somebody's right. going to fix it, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's what I want to do. Yeah. And I just you want to show up a player. People. We're approaching our, uh, our end point. Uh, we've got about five minutes. We can make it 10. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I, I know it goes so fast. Um, but yeah, I know, Benno, you probably have some more questions you want to get in there or? Well, you know, you'd mentioned bad actors and then we asked about your staff mm -hmm. and, and this might be an awkward question, but you know, we're, we're talking with small business owners in this space, such as yourself. Does the process that you built out, the tools that TCG gives you or any of the other tools that you're using, do they help you discern, hey, maybe this person working in my store is not a right fit? As much as you might say, this is not the right customer, does it help you find that fit so you can make sure to get the best people in there that are gonna build the community and also be there for your customers much more quickly? This, uh, it, it does, uh, you've got a, an option under pro called user roles, and that allows mm -hmm. us to get people onto the software with limitations on what they're doing and identification of who they are so we can tell what's been done within the system. Mm -hmm. And there's a phrase that you have to expect what you inspect. And so right. we have to be able to, yeah, anytime, uh, it, it, and you know, anytime that you can record performance and look at it later, it's, it's, uh, it's a hugely beneficial tool for that purpose. So it's right now I've got, I've got the, the very good fortune that I haven't had bad hires in, in quite some time, but you never know when you're going to bring somebody in and they seem promising. And what yeah. you find out is you know, let's, let's even say that there's nothing malicious going on. Sure. Their, their head is somewhere else. You know, they've got their, their, they've got something else going on. Uh, they're expecting to move on, but they haven't told us yet. That gotcha. sort of thing. And we can, we can start to catch that because we'll say, hey, you know, I was looking at the work you did yesterday and, you know, why did it take you, you know, uh, six hours of a shift uh, just to mm -hmm. add in the, uh, the uh, core 2020, you know, buys from yesterday. And that, that's not going to be enough volume. And it's so it, the software is a passive, quiet counter that misses nothing and that gets everything. And between logins and user roles in, in pro, this is something that we said right away that, that we needed before I even jumped on. And you guys gotcha. added it pretty quickly, actually. Excellent. And um, now that I'm on, I'm using it also. And it's, it's something that I think will get developed and fleshed out as, as you guys go. And For sure. uh, in fact, one, one of the things that you, um, that, that you sent me uh, as like a, you know, think about these issues mm -hmm. is what would be a, a wish that I would have for the platform? And uh, the, ne the next functionality that I, that I hope we can see, and I know it's non-trivial to develop, is, is rule-based price automation. Uh, and, uh, yeah. to, to give you an idea, one, one of your sync partners, uh, Ion by, by Nate Peterson, has this. And it allows uh, us to set within the system that like, hey, all rares uh, are, are going to be normalized at a price no lower than, say, whatever, 99 cents, doesn't matter. Sure. And then you're able to go into each card and uncheck that it's handled by the rule for something that's more than that under the market price. And that way you're allowed to do to use the market price automation, but also it will catch and not, it, it, it prevents, you know, the situations where you have the card that's going down to one cent because somebody has got it priced wrong and it's chasing after that one yes. spot, yeah. you know, and yeah. especially, especially with you got what multiple sync platforms, so who knows how they're, what software they're pricing with, right? It might be mm -hmm. something that you guys trust and it might be something that we don't even know about. Yeah. Uh, but rule automation will allow that. I, I, I know it is a big ask. So I, I know that it's not something that even if you were committed to doing it right now, it wouldn't happen tomorrow. But I hope down the road that's something we can get. So I'm hoping to pleasantly surprise you in the near future. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I won't say how near, but, uh, you know, I'll say that's you fair. might want to keep an eye if you're not using our mass pricing tool. Uh, there's some interesting stuff that's kind of slowly coming out in the mass price tool that sounds very similar to what you're talking about. Nice, nice. I'll get some mass price to do that. That's, uh, uh, that's along the lines of what you guys would do. So yeah, I'll definitely keep an eye on it. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's, what we want to do is make uh, running your store as frictionless as, as possible so yeah, that nice. you can, you had mentioned before, you still love games you don't get to play as many games as you want, but then you look at what you're doing right now as like a, a, a bigger or a different game. 
yeah. we're trying to make sure that just not unlike uh, Wizards would release new cards and you'd find new combinations. We want to release new features. You can find new combinations to win at that game of running your store. Love it. Love That's it. Awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. So, uh, what else? I, I know you got all kinds of questions lined up. I don't know how much time we got left, but I'm available. So. Oh, no, no. I'm so glad, uh, you know, number one, that you were free to join us uh, for the chat today. Um, I know we get to see you at Gamma. Are you headed to Gamma this year? This, uh, 2020, I won't be there uh, I mean, for the first time in five years. I'm skipping wow. uh, because it's, uh, I've, uh, for five straight years, I didn't do a spring break with the family and I'm going to do oh, it this nice. time. But, uh, but I'll, be back after, I'll be back at Gamma after that. Yeah. yeah. Great. You know, spring break in Reno is pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's right great. Uh, you know, I was hoping we could touch on one more thing, and that yeah. was, you know, we talked about so, several of your blog posts, and, and I, I cannot recommend it enough. I'm hoping when we share this out, we'll put some links to the blog post in particular that we're talking about. Nice. Um, but you've been talking a lot about how customers are, are changing the way they shop. And as a result, you know, you mentioned this earlier, you're, you've decided, you have decided to take a break in some specific product lines, but it's also, you know, part of our mission is to help stores like yourselves, uh, like yourself and of all varying sizes, move through that shift. You know, we, we like to think that, you know, for just a little bit of effort on your side, you're able to compete with these big box stores and you're able to compete with Amazon and, and so forth, which is, it's a great platform, but it's yeah. not, it's not community centric as, as we try to be. Um, I was hoping you could just talk a little bit about that, knowing that, you know, there are other small business owners working in the collectibles and gaming space that are listening. Yeah. And I, I and I, so, and I'm glad you phrased it that way. Cause I want to make sure that I don't uh, uh, get ahead of, uh, myself to somebody who's looking at this who doesn't already have this mechanism in place. Yeah. I'm so used to TCG player just kind of always being there yeah. and a part of my business every single day for X years. Um, if you don't have it yet and you're, and you're doing uh, TCG singles in any meaningful way, oh, you're completely missing the boat because that is at the top tier of how customers are starting to, pur to purchase and how they're starting to do their shopping. They really do. And it, this is a, you know, this is kind of a, a very rudimentary way to put it, but like, I can't tell you how many orders I get every day from a person who uh, on their lunch break at work taps their phone that they want a bunch of cards for pickup and they put, they enter pay in store and then we get the order spit out and it's just another order for us and we go ahead and get it ready. They come walking in half an hour before Pioneer that night or Modern or yeah. whatever and yeah. we hand them a bunch of cards and we take their money and over and over, and this is an everyday thing. And I remember for for years us saying like this is this is what we need to have and like that that's kind of matured to where it is happening dependably and the reason why that's so important is because the smartphone dominates so much of everybody's yeah. daily life it is it is so much of a uh, of a of, of a, a connection like nobody would dare go anywhere without without their smartphone these days and so naturally that's going to be part of shopping too and and so we're tapped into that where uh which i also tell people they're all like well what about orders off your website and i'm like don't worry about it so much be on the online marketplace for the products you carry the online marketplace is where everybody goes now so you're in the magic the gathering business or you're in the tcgs other than magic you know, whatever you need to be on TCG player because that is the marketplace that your, that your customers are on. Uh, if you're, if you're in board games, generally you need to be on Amazon. And I know you guys have made some, some forays in that direction as well. So w wherever that goes, I'm excited for that too. Um, and then after that, then they're going to look at the brand vertical. They're going to start going to the Warhammer stores. They're going to go to the Apple store. Yeah. They're going to go to the Disney store. I do that too. It's the same thing. And, and then after that, they'll shop big box. Not because we like big box. Yeah. Everybody hates big right. box. It's convenient. But we shop big box because it's right there and it's yep. cheap. Yeah. That, that's, where the, that's, that's usually where price is the main argument. Because you can only get two or three different versions of the thing. But by golly, they don't cost anything. So that's why yeah. they shop big box. Yeah. And after that, they're going to shop an independent. And that's where we come in and we say, okay, well, it really helps if we are also at the top end of that pecking order and we're taking marketplace orders, because then by the time they get to our independent store, we can focus on just being outstanding at a couple of things. And then we're tier one. We can be the place that they go. And, and especially if they're playing in events, the place that they go to play. And so we, we've got to be able to compete on that basis. Otherwise, you know, 
what are you going to compete on? What, how are, uh, who, who's going to go and just seek out a place that's just a hole in the wall somewhere and is not doing anything particularly well? That's not a compelling thing for the way people shop now in the information age. They're just not going to do it. So you got to be better than that. And, and I, I think you're, you're hitting the nail on, on the head as far as the way we try to look at it. You know, if we can help uh, that a store, small business, jump to the top of the line of that pyramid, like get up there and, and leverage the internet, then to your point, they can focus so much of their energy with that face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah. When, you know, the store comes in, if you imagine like for every 10 people that come walking through the door, using the internet gives you exposure to a thousand people. And if you yeah. can create some kind of revenue stream from that around something you love, that just makes it less stressful for you to go and, and interact with those 10 people and really talk about this thing you love. It, absolutely. If, if, you're, if you're spending your time working on backend systems, then, then you're not spending your time, you know, interacting with your clients. And uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, sometimes, uh, I sometimes forget because it's so obvious to me now, that, but uh, people ask me, they're like, well, don't, don't you have to pay a fee to be on those marketplaces? And I'm like, sure I do. They're, they're doing so much work for me. I don't have to do, I don't have to keep the database. I don't have to keep track of what products exist. They're yeah. already there. I don't have to yeah. keep track of, you know, we've got this card set coming out in what, four months and it's got 1800 cards in it. I do yeah. not want to spend time, <laughs> right? Like figuring that it's bad enough that I've got to spend time setting up how we're going to rack it. I don't want to build it in software also. And you guys are going to have that taken care of. It's probably already halfway there. Cause I guess people are already circulating this stuff. I haven't even looked. Maybe. I just assume it's there. Right. So it's, like, I, I imagine my backend staff could tell you, they have probably already been doing this for, for a week now. And, and I'm gotcha. the last guy to find out, but, uh, <laughs> but that's it. That's the kind of thing where if I was working on that, then I'm not doing higher value work of developing the business. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. yeah. That's excellent. And I hate to be the, the, the party closer. Um, oh, but we, I know, but we have run out of time and I still have so many questions. Um, but this was a really, really great session. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Benno, this was awesome to have, have you aboard. Before we close, do you have anything? And I'm sorry to jump in and cut it off here. Uh, no, just I want to remind everybody here, we've been talking with Mike from uh, Desert Star Games in Chandler, Arizona. Desert and Sky. if you are Desert Sky, so sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's the DSG good. just popped <laughs> in my head because I've been on the website. Desert Sky Games yeah. in yeah. Chandler, Arizona. We'll try to fix that in post. Yeah. Uh, and if you're, if you're in the Arizona area around Phoenix, Tempe, definitely stop in. What he's doing there is fantastic. Um, and then make sure to say hi to him on his blog and we'll make sure everybody who views us has an opportunity to go there. I think we have one question from uh, Shane Wicker that I want to make sure we, we get to, or at least he's, he's, uh, they, they've raised their hand. They have a question. Oh, you know what? And I apologize. I cannot view the question. Benno, if you're able okay. to view it, can you, I did something funky with my desktop. So I, I'm That's just fine. happy to see the little talking faces. <laughs> So uh, I'm just looking in the chat here. I don't see the question coming in. I just see Shane Wicker with their hand up. I'm hoping. Oh, okay. That's okay. Uh, we'll make sure to, to get back to Shane. Maybe Shane is saying, I'm in the area. I'll go, I'll go by the store. Oh, here we go. Okay. Mike, as a fellow store owner, do you offer an opportunity? Do you offer an opportunity for us to come in and chat? Shane Wicker would like to stop by your store and just chew the fat a bit. Oh, I, yeah. I'm, especially if you're if you're visiting, and especially if you're traveling, I'm delighted to delighted to uh, uh, hang out and visit and talk shop and and do that. And uh, you uh, you may have to uh, 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 bluff your way past my uh, my staff who are trying to <laughs> not let people uh, get in touch with me when they walk in the door because it's usually somebody you know selling gym memberships sure. or whatever. But yeah, uh, yeah. as soon as they realize you're running a store, they'll they'll even if I'm not in the building, they'll text me or something. And, That's and, fantastic. Uh, I, I'm certainly super in fact that reminds me I want to give a shout out to one of your seller spotlights from a few weeks ago to uh dan and darcy leach from uh, great ben kansas oh, and uh, from mind yeah. sculpt games i just i met them uh for the first time at, at gamma this year but have been following them kind of since they started and i i saw that they've got a big new lo location and i wanted to just you know wish them well and that's a it's a huge challenge and but uh, i i know that they're as friendly and gracious in real life as they are on social media so i'm, I'm confident it's going to go well that's fantastic. Yeah. 
Yeah. They have just made a hustle of a move uh, to the new store. So I hope that that continues to go great for them. And I, I think Darcy was on the stream with us today. So always nice. appreciate her joining, joining in. And awesome. so I guess, yeah, Mike, we wish you well. I know it's a, a busy, busy time with, with Pioneer and we're getting into Black Friday and then Cyber Monday and Small yeah. Business Saturday and everything. Um, so uh, best of luck to all the, the big sales coming up your way. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. And, and thank, thank you, you so for everything much. you do, yeah. Mike. Yeah, Megan, Benno, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. And uh, you guys, I didn't know what to really expect, but you guys made it easy. So I hope everybody had an entertaining time watching yeah. along. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, y'all know where to find me. So uh, go out there, be healthy and prosperous. <laughs> right on. Thanks again. Thanks, thank everybody, you. for joining. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.